Representative Barry Loudermilk with us. Um, uh, he is uh, going to talk to us a little bit about the newly released transcripts uh, from January 6th. Uh, and the transcripts that show what Donald Trump said in the days leading up to January 6th, urging the Pentagon to take extra security measures to keep January 6th safe, and they didn't do it. Representative from Georgia, Barry Loudermilk. Barry, how are you? Good, Glenn. Appreciate you having me on again. You bet. So t- tell me uh, what this is actually uh showing us because it's not just if i may read the president what he said uh there's going to be a large amount of protesters here on the six make sure that you have a sufficient national guard or soldiers to make sure it's a safe event i don't care if you use guard or soldiers active duty soldiers do what you have to do just make sure it's safe that's what the president said leading up what and yes go ahead the, and that was a sworn testimony by General Milley to the Department of Defense Inspector General. And And that conversation happened on January 3rd, three days leading up to January 6th. And when did he testify to that? He testified to that. uh, It would have been later in 2021 uh, (laughs) to the Department of Defense Inspector General. Now, what got us in this direction is we were investigating the two delays of National Guard coming to the Capitol. There was the first delay because U.S. Capitol Police Chief Sun, he sent the same thing the president did. There are going to be a lot of people here. We're in the middle of COVID. A lot of the Capitol Police officers are being quarantined or they're sick. He didn't have a full force. He wanted some additional forces and requested D.C. National Guard. Now, that requires an official request for the D.C. National Guard, because the president can't just deploy military forces without a request, a separation of powers issue. Under current law, that had to come from the Capitol Police Board, which pretty much Pelosi is going to be involved in that decision making. But for whatever reason, his request was denied internally within Congress. So um, he had made a request. Um, even on to January 6th, he had made requests, like when the outer perimeters were breached, he wanted National Guard. That was denied. That was denied. Finally, when shots were fired in the Capitol, even the Democrats were like, well, we need help. At 2.30, the formal request was made to the Pentagon, send the troops. Now, we already know, as you just brought up, that uh, President Trump had ordered the National Guard to be ready to deployment. That was the order. That's what General Milley said. And we know that they took that seriously because the National Guard on January 6th was mustered at the armory less than two miles away from the Capitol with riot gear ready to deploy. They were already there. So we know that somebody took that seriously. So, but from 2.30, when the request was made, there was about a three-hour delay before the order was given for the the National Guard to deploy. That's what we started looking into. Now, the IG started looking into that as as well, the Department of Defense IG. Their report was the National Guard wasn't ready. That's Hmm. why they didn't go. It was National Guard's fault. Well, we started having senior officers and enlisted members from the National Guard coming to us as whistleblowers saying, that isn't at all what happened. So we started launching an investigation into the DODIG report. And after this has been a m- months and months of battle with the Department of Defense, and quite frankly, that's the 800-pound gorilla in this town. I didn't think we were going to get anywhere. But Providence, something broke loose, and they provided us all the evidence that they had acquired, the DODIG, in their investigation, which was 44 transcribed interviews under oath. When we got those, we realized this was a huge cover-up because they were purposefully, the National Guard was purposefully delayed by the Pentagon. Uh, They did not want the National Guard here. Uh, They didn't like the optics. Some were, uh, but that was most of, nobody liked the optics, but we didn't have senior officials who were saying, my my ultimate plan was to make sure the National Guard never got anywhere close to the Capitol. So tell me about Christopher Miller, because if I'm reading this right, he was the acting uh, secretary of defense. He said 
the president commented that they were going to need 10,000 troops the following day. I interpreted it as a bit of presidential banter or President Trump banter that you're all familiar with. And in no way, shape or form did I interpret that as an order or direction. On January 6th, everyone was like, did you hear the president's speech? I'm like, the guy speaks for 90 minutes. It's like Castro or something. No, I got work to do. I was cognizant of the fears that the president would invoke the Insurrection Act to politicize the military in an anti-democratic manner. And just before the Electoral College certification, 10 former secretaries of defense signed an op-ed piece published in the Washington Post warning of the dangers of politicizing and using inappropriately the military. Nothing like that was going to occur on my watch. That's correct. And that was testimony that he gave to the Department of Defense IG under oath. And what he's talking about is Liz Cheney kind of orchestrated in advance an op-ed by former defense officials basically setting a stage. You know, uh, uh, to, they were afraid that Trump was going to come out and try to use the military to stop the count. There is nothing that any evidence that we have obtained or that we can find anywhere to indicate that that was in his mindset. Um, but as I said earlier, someone took what Trump said as serious because the National Guard had already been uh, recalled. They were mustered. They were ready to go by, in the morning of January 6th. Um, in fact, when the, the, the general commanding the D.C. National Guard finally was shown that statement that Trump made to General Milley, he said, I would have taken that as a direct order. Politics and your political belief should never no. be a factor involved when it comes to safety and security. And I would also counter this. If they were afraid that there was an act of insurrection that was going to take place and they saw the violence going on at the Capitol that day, and that was an act of insurrection, insurrection did they participate in it by holding back the very Correct. troops that could quell it? And, you know, there's one thing about um, taking an order that is constitutional and one that is not. So, in other words, if he said, look, there's going to be a, a, a possible riot, we need 10,000 troops there, let's make sure the capital is safe. Okay, well, I'm worried that he's going to use those troops for something else. No, because the military has to has to uh, uh, execute what the president says unless it's an unlawful order. Then it is their responsibility to not say, well, I was just following orders in our country. You don't have that excuse. So if it was an unconstitutional order, the Pentagon could have stopped it. Correct. Right. Instead, exactly. they were just uh, uh, subordinate, right? Is that the right word? Not only, I think that uh, that's right. Okay. Uh, it's subordination, but also premeditated. Yes. Um, I think there's a case to be made that this was premeditated because on January the 5th, the Secretary of the Army uh, revised or sent a memo to uh, General Walker, who is the uh, commanding general of the D.C. National Guard, and placed greater restrictions on him on when he can deploy and how. I mean, they even restricted you can't be armed. Okay, it's, it's all kind of restrictions. But basically what he said is you cannot deploy without my express uh, permission that I have to give you the order. And that was unprecedented. That was the day before. So basically General Walker's in the situation where if President Trump called him directly and said, get over there, and the Secretary of the Army didn't tell him he would be in subordination. So there were greater restrictions placed on the D.C. National Guard, which to me shows some kind of premeditation. Um, maybe it was fear that Trump was going to go rogue or whatever, but he's still the commander in chief. And the request was to get National Guard there to help keep the Capitol safe, right. not to participate in anything, right. but to help keep it safe. You can't you can't convict somebody of future crimes. You know, you can't say, well, this is what he intended. No, what he said as the commander in chief is keep the Capitol safe. Now, if he would have said, you know what, go in and tell Congress they are going. No, Mr. President, that's unconstitutional. I will not give that order. And if he got on TV and said, you know, I'm 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 telling them now 
to go in. The American people would not have been with him. They wouldn't have been with him. Right. No, not at all. But here's there's there's so many angles to this here. One is how did the DODIG, out of all this exact same evidence that we're looking at, how did they come up with a report that it was the National Guard that was the problem? This I'm still getting my head wrapped around this. There is mm-hmm. no way you could come up with that conclusion unless you're just trying to cover for people who did things they shouldn't do. Senior officers, uh, senior uh, civilians within the Department of Defense. And so we're asking of the Department of Defense IG, how can this be and when are you going to correct this? Of course, their response is we don't see any need to correct it. Um, But we have now made all this public. People can make this decision for themselves. I've I've said from the beginning, I'm coming to this from an unbiased opinion. We're going to just get the facts out there and let the facts speak for themselves. And there's another angle to this that's a problem. There are there are uh, senior executive level folks in the DOD that testified one thing to the Department of Defense IG, but testified differently to the Select Committee on January 6th. They shall go to jail. They're under oath. And and so this is something that we're starting to look at now, doing a side by side comparison. Did their story change? Did they have a better understanding? Or was it that they were confident that the DOD, I, their testimonies to DOD IG would never make it outside of the IG? Unbelievable. So it's just more layers of the story, the corruption and the cover-ups that have happened regarding January 6th. Because as it comes down to it, the select committee on January 6th had a predetermined narrative. They had, before they started it all, Nancy Pelosi yep. had already set what their final report was going to say, right. and they were going to collect evidence to support it. And as we've talked on this show before, any evidence that didn't support it or actually told an, a different story, they suppressed, they hid, or they deleted. And fortunately, we've been able to recover most of that. Uh, Congressman Barry Loudermilk from the great state of Georgia, thank you so much for this. I want to just reiterate one more thing. This, this is the quote. Anybody who wants to talk about January 6th, this is the quote, and you can get it from the House Subcommittee on Oversight. Um, this is the quote from Donald Trump the day before. Hey, look at this. There's going to be a large amount of protesters here on the 6th. Make sure that you have sufficient National Guard or soldiers to make sure it's a safe event. I don't care if you use Guard, soldiers, active duty soldiers. Do whatever you have to do. Just make sure it's safe. End quote. Donald Trump, January 5th. That should close the case on insurrection. That's the truth.